Check out this amazing theater. You are not gonna believe what you're about to see. Follow me. Today, I have a special episode. You know I have been doing the ultra high-end audio for a long time. And I'm gonna show you a store here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Front Row Theater. To me, this could perhaps be the most impressive theater I have ever seen in the South Florida region. Walk with me and check out this amazing theater. Follow me. I'm going to introduce you to John Marrero. He is going to walk us through what they have going on here at Front Row Theater. Pleasure to meet you. Hey Jake, pleasure to meet you. Nice seeing you. Um, enjoyed your videos from time to time, so it's great to see you in person. Um, you know, I, uh, at Front Row Theater, I'm responsible for new construction and design work and whatever the case is. So putting together the theater rooms and laying out the automation and all that stuff is- So you do the automation, mm -hmm. all the connections. The lighting, the, the lighting. seating, the wow. interior, the build out, whatever it takes. We do it from soup to nuts. Wow. Beginning to end, so the, basically designing the entire theme. Absolutely. Of, okay. And you know, in today's market, because there's home theaters that have aged out, we replace, you know, existing systems as well. Amazing, amazing. Let's walk to this amazing theater. Check this out. Come on back. Before we start, you have to, I mean, you just sit down, please, right now. Grab your coffee or favorite uh, beverage because this is special. Let me show you. Look at this. This is just an astonishing, astonishing theater. So we're inside the theater right now and John is gonna walk us through what he has in here. John, walk us through this amazing theater. Ah, no problem. So we'll first start off with the Sony projectors. They have GPZ 380, it's their top of the line projector. It's um, 10,000 ANSI lumens bright, which is just a technical term. But what it means for the consumer or for you know the professional out there in the universe, it means that it'll display an image with color in a well-lit environment. Right now I have the lights up 100% here in our theater room. And if we were to take a look at the image, you could see we still have color, we still have resolution, and we're not fighting the room light. Unlike having a dark movie theater is the only way to have an image show up. So it's really flexible. Let me tell you what a stunning image that is. I am just absolutely blown away by it. Typically on my channel, we talk about soundstage, depth, width, and we're gonna get there, don't worry. We're gonna get there. He's gonna go over the audio components that make up this theater. This projector MSRP is for how much? It's uh, 89,000 and change. As I said to you, this is a serious theater, not for the faint of heart. Amazing, amazing clarity. I've never seen a projector in front of me, actually, that looks as stunning. Not even my local AMC theater, to be honest with you, it looks as amazing, as crisp, colorful as this one does. Well, Sony does a great job with the uh, production of projectors because they're so tied into the video industry or the film industry as well as, you know, television because, you know, they start at the, at the point of the camera. I mean, they build a lot of the 4K cameras that get used today right. in, in shooting stuff, whether it be cinema or, you know, live TV. That's, that's who's there. And not only do they take it from there, but then they take it to their mixing boards, their mixing consoles, their monitors, um, which are amazing. And then they double down. So they've got, they've got the whole pathway figured out from, you know, the beginning of the, of the movie to putting it on the screen somewhere. Right now I own the 6000 ES laser projector and I how to calibrate it. I'm in love with the machine. So I'm a big Sony fan, I must say. Um, but you know, of course, some of you might love JVC and that's fine. There are flavors for everyone. Nothing wrong with that. So let's get started now with the 
audio part, which is what a lot of my viewers want to know. I am sure you guys are eager to know what made Jay walked into a home theater location <laughs> and present us with such a, an amazing home theater. So let's talk about what you have going on. So now you take me to what I know best. I see these things, these wisdom audio speakers, the MSRP for how much? Uh, these are uh, $72,500 each. each. And then you can get different Chotskys, but uh, they're right around that. Okay, tell us about this brand. I have heard a lot about Wisdom Audio. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to sit down and listen to them in a two channel environment, okay? I've heard them in here and it's amazing what they do when it comes to home theater. The spaciousness, it's very smooth, never fatiguing, um, and um, I found them quite musical. So tell us a little more about the speaker. Okay, so <clears throat> the, the Wisdom speaker, the, the LS4 model here was a departure for them as far as building something that would do some of the things you just spoke about, Jay. It plays loud without it fatiguing. Right. Um, once again, the, the efficiency is, uh, you know, like 101 dB at one watt at one meter. So having these play, you know, at 114 dB or greater is not a problem with amplification. They'll get loud. It won't, you know, it won't bother you like a traditional driver. These are <clears throat> uh, planar magnetic drivers, okay, which is unique to Wisdom in, in the processes. This is what they do amongst all their speakers in their product line. Um, it's basically, you know, it's, it's a piece of film with, a, with an etched in voice coil to, you know, for lack of a better explanation, that's, that's you know, laser it in and it's and it's, it's bonded together uh it can play extremely loud there's 2375 magnets magnets okay. in this speaker alone driving the technology so it's rapid fast rapid smooth very efficient and just does a wonderful job as far as one thing natively is that <clears throat> you know most speakers are a point source this being a line source not a line array but a line source allows it to deal with the reflections through you know from the ceiling and the floor through the room and play through the room seamlessly so it's 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 really like you said just a moment ago clarity ease play no volume no compression there's no crossover in this once again this either requires a dsp amplifier okay okay or requires dsp in the processor one or the other so this is interesting that you're bringing up this point i have seen a lot of brands um, that are now doing external crossovers now not as of late they've been doing it for quite some time sure. specifically these panels okay these panels that i run right now i'm not going to mention um, but if you search online, you'll know what I'm talking about. They have external crossovers, and that seems to be a thing now. I remember actually almost buying a speaker by the name of Vivid Audio with the external crossovers because they claim that one of the biggest advantages of that is you essentially mitigate the vibration um, it, from happening inside the crossover. Right. So when you pull it out, and you isolate it, that's not vibrating anymore. And that's supposed to increase the level of clarity and resolution through any speaker. Right. Now, I have no idea why some brands do not do that. I think that that could very well be the future for a lot of different designs, for a lot of different loudspeaker designers. Um, but I've seen that quite often, and it's great to see. Now, are these built in the US? Yes, everything's built here in the United States. The, the thing that you know I want to point to, because you made the point of it about the crossover, in whatever the case is, the, the, the air motion transformers and the other panel type speaker designs that are out there, the electrostatics and whatever the case is, you know, the crossover still becomes, you know, something that they have to do because their driver technology will not go eight octaves or five octaves. Right. So they're kind of stuck with, you know, I can't go from, you know, 80 hertz to 20,000 hertz without a crossover point because my driver will only do, you know, 2.5K and above. So it, it's, it's, it's a... It's not a bad design. It's not, you know, it's not terrible. I mean, there's a lot of product that seem really good, but this is a breakthrough in how to improve the performance because the bottom line is I can go from 80 Hertz to 20 K, no problem. All I do is deal with the DSP and the speaker works. And these are very tall, by the way, I'm six one and you can see the height of the speaker. It's very, very big. Look how wide it is. So you have an idea. 
okay so it's not a small speaker i don't know the weight i'm assuming what at least 200 pounds uh they <coughs> i think they're about 400 pounds in the crate okay each crate each wooden crate they come with ways of <laughs> you know they dropped it off with a lift gate in the whole wow. nine yards it, it was it was intense as far as the amplification, um, is it a wisdom amplifier that you need? What do you? What can you drive them with? You can drive them with, ampli you know, amplifiers that are available in the marketplace. Depending upon the actual speaker that you're getting from Wisdom, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we are using all the Wisdom amplifiers in our system to run the audio in this room. The processor we're using is from a company called Trinoff. We'll definitely see that and soon. And we'll see that as well. But um, the bottom line is, yes, we're using the, uh, the Wisdom amplifiers. They're great, they stack, they're efficient. They're 500 watts a channel. Some of them, they're multi-channel. Class D, or yeah. Yeah, Class D. Yeah. Okay, a lot of theaters are doing Class D now. Yeah. I have seen more and more of that efficiency, right? They don't put out, put out a lot of heat. They're not massive chassis. Oftentimes, so there are, there are so many more benefits that class D amplification brings into the you know, home theater environment. Thir you know, 20, 30 years ago, maybe even 40 years ago, um, before class D was uh, a real factor in the amplifier world, um, you know, you didn't see it and it, it probably didn't sound that great. But over the time between the music industry and our industry and what we've gotten into class D, also in the car audio industry, class D amplification has just been a choice and it has continued to improve in performance and quality and everything else along the way. And all the attributes you just shared, Jay, are absolutely on point. I'm actually an owner of a seven, eight channel actually, eight channel ATI class D amplifier. It's running my surround speakers and my Atmos. For the front, I use a Mark Levinson three channel. Uh, but I think I'm gonna eventually make the switch to Class D uh, because I do like the smaller chassis. It's just leave them on, they're efficient. They don't draw a lot of power from right. the current. You can leave them on 24 seven yep. and they don't cook up your room, which no. we know today in Florida, it's over a hundred <laughs> degrees today. It is brutally hot in yeah, Florida the cars today. Are, the cars are like toasters. So, uh, but that's great to know. Now, one of the things, okay, that really drew me to this theater, when I first came out, was the center channel configuration. Take a look at the incredible size of this center channel, which looks like an array of speakers. So John, tell us a little bit about this center channel, the configuration, uh, how is it wired? I cannot remember the conversation that I had with Chris okay. a few months ago, but he went into detail as to what made this center channel configuration so special. Okay, so <clears throat> in the center channel universe, what's, what's occurred is Recently, there's a move in the theater world or in the media room world to these large uh, LED or LCD panels, you know, these flat panel televisions that you put together by pieces and you can make them as large or as small as you want. I mean, they've got TVs now that are 280 inches and, in, in, you know, diagonal in the whole nine yards. But there's no, <clears throat> there's no way to put a center channel behind them, which is the traditional way to do a theater room. So... Um, Wisdom, you know, has been working on this project for a couple of years, and this was actually the first one that was built and put anywhere in, in a, let's say, in a showroom. Um, wow! Just recently. Nice. So the series, <clears throat> the Line Seven, which is this is custom built. Now you can get this in a five. You can get this in a seven, which is what we have. You can get this in a nine. You can get this in any odd number you can get. You can build it that large. And it, it's really unique because it does use, once again, the wisdom amplification. But this one requires their DSP amplification so they can adjust the sound and get it to move correctly across the front stage. But the best part about it, having just recently put this in, we had a problem with our center channel either sounding like it was too low or too high, and this thing just puts the image right dead center. Really? Which, <clears throat> wow. the voice becomes, the front stage of a theater room becomes everything. And with this particular setup, you just don't miss anything. And I, and I wonder if the reason why it's so wide is so that everyone, regardless of where you sit, can clearly hear the dialogue. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But sometimes but this that's one, a challenge in This my one room. is specifically this wide to match our screen, Correct. which is 16 feet wide, basically. 16 feet wide. So, you know, that's really, that's really the premise. We could have got away with a five, but, you know, our screen is much larger. And yes, our viewing area is, and seating area is much right. larger, listening area. How many channels are running this right now? How many so amplifiers? There's... Um, 
there's uh, three channels, two three channel DSPs okay. that are running this. Um, these these three speakers and those three speakers run off you know a set of channels, and then there's another two channel that runs the center. Okay. A lot. Gotcha. So Got it. look okay. at how large this is. Look at the size of this enormous center channel. Multiple amplifiers, DSPs, according to John. The best thing about this is that it doesn't sound like the dialogue is coming from under the screen, but rather somewhere in the middle. That's incredible. And I, I guess that's the magic from uh, Wisdom Audio and all the DSP and all this correction. I mean, you know, our industry has struggled for years with getting the, the dialogue channel really correct. Right. Whether you're just watching TV or, you know, you're watching a movie. And that just becomes a critical, critical thing. And tools like this allow us to do the very best job okay. possible, yeah. which is really yeah. nice. How many channels is the theater? We haven't mentioned that. So, so basically we have the front stage, which is three channels. We have four subs total. Um, on the sides, we have <clears throat> two sides, four rears, and in the ceiling, we have an additional, at, <clears throat> additional for Atmos, um, I think it's a total of seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Nine Atmos. Nine, nine Atmos. That's so it, it gets to be a little crazy. It you is. Don't, you don't have, on the Atmos side, you don't have to get this nuts, um, but you know, we were gonna build this room once, so we got a little nuts. One of the coolest things I've seen, maybe I'm just, completely uneducated about automation is the fact that they can actually close that door with the iPad. You push a button and the door closes. Let's try it. Yeah, well, not only can I do it with the iPad, Jay, now the lights are gonna turn off, but we have a little light on us. I can close it right here from my handheld remote. Take a look at the door closing. Which means I could do it Wow, from to me, <laughs> I'm sold right there. I am sold immediately. Okay, so talk to us, uh, John, about the subwoofer. What kind of, it looks massive. I mean, you all should know by now, I like big components, big amplifiers, and the subs are no exception. Unfortunately, I cannot fit these in my room. If not, they would be in my room for my home theater, okay? So these are Wisdom Audio subs. Tell us a little bit about the subs. Okay, so Wisdom Audio sub, <clears throat> their subs are based on a regenerative transmission line system, okay, which is very few speakers are out, you know, transmission lines are like that. The nice part about that whole process is that it gives us three points of resonant frequencies that will play naturally louder than the other frequencies across the spectrum it's trying to come. The best part about that is it gives us maximum tuning capability in any room in any environment. This, <clears throat> this particular unit has dual 15 inch subs, but it sounds like dual 18s given the configuration and the way they've laid it out. Okay. It requires a DSP amplification or DSP control in order to get it to do what it can do and the potential. They're 101 dB efficient at one watt per one meter. These things will play loud, fast, and clean, and they're extremely musical. Extremely musical. Now, do they have built-in um, amplification or no built-in? Built no, no, they're all passive, yeah. so what happens is we amplify them after the fact. What kind of amplification? So we're using the Wisdom. Wisdom Audio, okay, their, Wisdom own, Audio, their yeah. own amplification. And if we, have, if we don't have DSP in the processor, we have to use the DSP in the amplifiers. Okay. So yeah. It's, it's actually, uh, how much do they weigh? They look pretty heavy I, to You me. know what, I don't know the weight. <laughs> I, I could tell you it took several I'm already guys. gauging more or less if I can just log him and take him it, home. <laughs> it took several guys to get him up here. They're totally flexible as far as install. You can put them you know, in the floor, in the furniture, out of the room, in the room. There's all sorts of vari you know, variations of that. Uh, it, it's just, you know, in this application, we kind of exposed them just so people could see the size of what we were talking about and the commitment that we had to getting the performance in this room, given its size. And you said something very interesting to me, which was uh, the impact, the dispersion of the sub. OK, I sat here on like multiple chairs and I'm telling you right now, you get the impact regardless of where you sit. Nothing hides from these subs. And I didn't hear any rattling, actually. No, they're, they're at all in here. I, and these things can hit low, like real deep and yeah. loud. And I heard nothing vibrating in the room. So I, I'm assuming part of your part of co constructing a, a, a well-designed theater, you have to actually mean, keep that resonance at bay, right? All well, that I, vibration. I, well, yeah, you want to make sure that the room itself is ready for the equipment and that it's not 
it's not interacting with the equipment or the movement of sound in the room. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but with these, it's like, like I said, we have three frequencies that it picks. And the, the nice part about this, the highest output is going to be the lowest resonant frequency on this particular device. So I think it's like 19 hertz. So that's going to, you know, in, in its natural state, that's going to be great output versus, let's say, something at 18 or 15 or, or, you know, or lower or something slightly above. And then we have another point and another point. It's really really great science and i see that you guys have them angled towards the outside to hit the side walls right so we could have done we could have had this panel here can be removed and the grill can play forward oh it can play out of the ground it like i said from an installation standpoint so, it's extremely flexible so it's kind of like uh think of it a little bit and i hate to to make a comparison here think of it like the xvx that i have at home so you can actually plug the the port the front port if the rear firing port works better in your room or plug the rear port and open up the front firing port if that works better. In my situation, the front firing port is the best option. So that's what these essentially bring to the table, the that, flexibility. Exactly. That's awesome. I've never seen that before, by the exactly. way. Exactly. Now, I've always seen where you can seal the plug with a right. special foam right. so you can use it in a seal configuration or remove it and use it in a ported configuration but never where you can actually shift it around like this and Correct. i think that's absolutely great okay awesome chairs love the color i think these are wife approved if you ask me okay most women hopefully you all are watching me okay would approve of this color i completely love the look this is suede the, the, the just the everything about the chair and i'm big by the way not big in a bad way you know what i'm saying okay but i'm, I'm a big guy i'm six one and I fit so comfortably. Amazing. Tell us about these chairs. Where are they from? Um, okay, so this is a German built product. It's a company called Sonic. Sonic, okay. Okay, so they come from the other side of the pond. Uh, they've been making chairs for a long, a long time. They do a great job. Um, if <clears throat> they, they do the smart things, like all the controls are in the side panels here, you know, to have it recline. Love it. You know, get your feet up, whatever the case is. And they even have USB jacks for yes. charging your phone um, because a lot of people want to have their phones oh, with yeah. them to stay in contact with family or whatever the case is while they're in the theater. Um, so it's, it's, it's a great win and a great combination. And also, you can get the arms made where there can be storage in them. Oh, we, wow. we, we chose to get the, um, the tabletop so we could place you know, snacks, food, drink, whatever the case is, have a stable place for it to land and, not, and kind of not be in the way. You know, it's uh, it feels very premium. The chairs don't feel cheap at all. No. Um, and believe me, when I sit down, I'll know if it's something is cheap <laughs> because it will rattle, it will squeak. You'll hear everything. And this this is a an incredible product. I love the look. Overall, it's a really well laid out theater. Big question that all my audience wants to know. Everyone there wants to know. Taking outside of the equation. The cost to build a room, which I have to believe was not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. We only take into account projector and electronics, uh, which we still need to go to the back and see, by the way. What, what kind of MSRP are we talking about, more or less? Okay, so <clears throat> for, the, for the technology that's in the room, right. <clears throat> without the build-out and with, without the chairs, you're looking at about $585,000. I know a thing or two about I can smell the ultra high end. John, let's go check out the back room so we can see all the other amplification and oh, processing absolutely. power. Follow us, guys. We're under construction. We oh. have to take this real quick. We have a side project here. We put in brand new span um, <clears throat> breaker panels to do more control of our electricity in the environment. Nice. We've just put in a Thor surge protector. It's a commercial Ooh. level surge sure protector. Sure it is. Um, this, this actually will stop just Whoa. about anything that comes in. Um, everything's gonna be controlled on the iPad and we have a brand new um, backup battery system coming to run the showroom as well from <clears throat> uh, Extreme Power. Wow, this is, so what is this exactly in here? So these are intelligent, break, uh, an intelligent breaker system where the breakers are dumb that themselves, but there's intelligence in the panel. This was really developed to allow us to control the loads. And especially if you have solar, this gives us the ability to load shed and have your solar batteries that you may have like a Tesla wall, have them last longer during the event of an outage. This was actually designed by a Tesla, ex-Tesla engineer wow. 
for that reason. How much is this going to cost me? Um, these panels installed, depending upon where you go, are running anywhere between fifty-five to eighty-five hundred dollars per panel. Okay, great. Depending upon how you yeah, populate. Yeah, I, I, I mean, this is pretty. Don't come to my house and check out my panel, <laughs> please. Okay, it doesn't look this way. Let's talk about the electronics here. Okay, so on on this this rack here, which runs the room where we were just in, basically. At the top, we have the MAD VR, which is a processor we'll talk a little bit about. What it does is it maps the video perfectly to the screen and it allows us to not even have to use the masking on the screen system that we have in the room. This is the Trinoff uh, processor. This is their top of the line processor. It has as, as many outputs as anyone would ever really need. Um, then we start with the different wisdom amplifiers, and they're either in a three channel or a two channel configuration. The lights will tell us the number of channels whether it's a DSP or not, but as we said, these are all Class D. They're, um, they're very small, they stack nicely, it's real simple, and um, they run very efficiently. This, this side of the rack runs a room that we have upstairs that we'll talk about later, Absolutely. which is a whole different concept that we have, and this is using a storm processor. Um, we also have an Anthem processor that we can run in that room, and some Anthem amplifiers, and in that room, we're actually using JL Audio subs. Great. Yeah. Man, let me see. Do they run hot? Yeah. No. No. Normal. And I think it's part of it is actually the heat from everything, but it's not doesn't run hot at all, guys. I love the efficiency. Look, it's incredible. It's well, incredible how everything coming behind so you can see uh, the cable well. I mean, this to me, this is a phenomenal job. Well, and, and, and with the amount of cables they have going on. And in the cabling world, what we've done here, which is a little different than tradition, is we've, we've actually used high-end audio cables to run our theater downstairs. So it, it, they're bulkier, they're a little bit more difficult to lace and make you know beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But the performance to the speakers and the product is amazing. Amazing. No, I'm, I'm big on cables. I mean, everyone knows. Everyone who follows me, I mean, these people clearly believe in cables. Absolutely. As you can see right now, it's incredible. I love how everything is zip tied together. You don't have a spider web or cables, which I am guilty of, I must say. But you know, I have a lab, so I don't. You know, I'm not trying to impress clients. But well, yeah, maybe I do at some point. But so let's talk about the other room in case some of you f are feeling left out. I thought about you. Okay, I thought about you. I wanted to make sure that. I have a little bit for everyone. We're gonna go check out another theater room they have in here that's more affordable. It's not half a million dollars. It's a lot less, but I think it's actually, that room left a good impression on me when I came to see it because oh. it's so contemporary. I personally think it's got a tremendous wife approval factor. So let's check it out, John. Yep, you got Follow it. us. Let's check. See, this is cool right here. One of my favorite movies. It changed. Yeah, that's a great movie. So too. this is this is a digital <clears throat> digital uh, signage board, and it's basically made for movie pictures. And you could have you know, movie content posters. Wow. Keep scrolling through and do whatever you want. Wow. You can have artwork, whatever the case is. And it's kind of neat. Beautiful. Movie. beautiful. Go. Let's check it out, guys. Come on, Jay. All right, let's check out this room, which. I personally think it has an amazing wife approval factor. No cables anywhere, no speakers anywhere, television, a couch, a table like a coffee table, and your remote control. How cool is that? This is to me the future in my opinion. This is like when you have a ride. I believe in the future. I don't know if with two channel we'll be able to do this, but you know what? It would be cool if they eventually created loudspeakers that went completely into the wall and that sounded just as good as the cabinets being out of the wall, right? Because that's always been a concern. Sure, of how good of a loudspeaker can you build when it's got to be inside the wall? But I love the look. Walk us through this room. Okay, so this room here, um, this is a little different than the room downstairs. Everything's hidden, as Jay said. The speakers are behind the fabric, so you don't have to see them. 
We do have some speakers in the ceiling, um, but because of our limitations with this ceiling, we didn't enclose it in. We wanted to keep it open. Um, the main speakers up front are, there's two JL Audio subwoofers in the wall. There's <clears throat> uh, Martin Logan Statement in walls, which are amazing, and uh, matching center channel, which is the seven, um, with the smaller speakers on the sides and the rears. So, and then we also have an additional JL Audio sub in the rear to really balance out the bass management in the room. Um, using the Sony 100 inch display, which has gotten more popular, more common, and what's been interesting, Jay, about this, um, for all your viewers, this, this set started out at around $60,000 a couple wow. of years ago. Today, today okay. it's like 11,000 and change, and we, may, we believe it'll break $10,000 in the next six months. So 100 inch right now, right? 100 inch. That's perfect. 16 by 9 video display. So you could do either a projector in a room like this or you could do a flat panel display. We wanted to show what people are more inclined to do because you could do this in a family room. Right. 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 You could put this in you your could. family room. Absolutely. High decor environment and, you know, just keep it simple, but still get the impact of a large visual image. Right. OK, so talk to us about the audio components like where are they like the receiver the you know the audio the, the amplification where is it that's all hidden downstairs in a rack okay. or it's hidden in the room in a rack or it can be hidden in a closet it doesn't have to be local With to the you. environment like right now i have a project completing where you know all we have is the display with the speakers in their family room and all the equipment's in a rack at the garage entryway they don't none of the equipment's there so it, you know that's what you can do with a combination of the automation and you know hiding the equipment which is what you know people prefer they don't want to see a lot of stuff i i am leaning in that direction to be honest with you i go through too much at a home in my room with cables everywhere and when i go to the living room this is i think what every wife would well, love to see don't show me anything. You have no idea how many emails I get, John, yeah. from my viewers, um, where we're talking about components, and one of the biggest things they say to me is, oh, I can't buy that, my wife won't approve. Right. I, can't, I wish I could, but the color is not my wife's, you know, it doesn't fit with our decor. So this layout, and by the way, you can make these walls any color they want. Right? Absolutely. That's another thing, so it's very fully, you can customize it to the full color, fabric, you know, whatever they want to do, the look, the environment, the style. You know, you can do things in Art Deco style. You can do things in this kind of style. You can do things in a traditional old theater style. You know, whatever the case is. If if you envision it, you want to do a western theme theater. Hey, you want to do a a, a, a movie room like a Star right. Wars theater? You can make a room look like a Star Wars fighter jet on the inside and do what you want to do. So the flexibility to create the environment. You want to create is out there and as long as you said as you said as long as everybody's happy once once they pick what they're doing that's what makes it that's what makes it fun so know? this entire room was done by cinematech the chairs the panels that you see the walls essentially are all designed by them amazing job i love the color combination the chairs come from germany it's just everything screams quality i'm really enjoying this beautiful room One last thing I want to ask you, John, are there any other things when it comes to automation that we haven't seen, my audience hasn't seen that maybe you want to talk about? What, what else are you guys doing today? Well, you know, in, in today's environment, we can control, you know, for example, sitting in this room, we can control the air conditioner. Sitting in this phone from, from your, you know, mobile device, you can answer the gate or answer a front door. Um, you can unlock a front door or a gate and let somebody onto your property. So you can check your security cameras. You can see what's going on at the pool with the kids in the pool. So there's a lot of stuff that can be done as far as automation goes or integration. Controlling the lights, you know, all day long. Um, you know, one of the things that has gained some traction is lights that, you know, create different lighting in your home during the day 
to create wellness, you oh, know. The mood um, and... Yeah, oh, exactly, wow, wow. exactly. And they, you know, they have a nice esoteric fancy name for it. But the bottom line is we're recreating what happens naturally in light in the, outside in the environment, going from, you know, light to dark. So the bottom line is there's a lot of stuff we can do as far as, you know, opening shades, closing shades, shutting doors, turning on the security system at night. And all this can be done from a phone. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere. You could be anywhere. Simple. It doesn't matter. Wow. Yeah, and, and the reliability of the products today, f far differently than it was maybe 40 years ago. Because right. we, we have a lot more experience and we've had a lot more testing and a lot more time to really develop things that are working. I mean, you go to a Home Depot today and you'll see all sorts of automation there, you know, for the do-it-yourselfer. It's there. Absolutely. You know? And we can integrate with some of those products. That's great to know. So let's talk about the price point for this room here, this home theater. Downstairs, we said north of half a million dollars. What would someone have to spend to have a room so nicely laid out like this? Okay, so a room like this, the way it's configured with the product that's in it, runs around $150,000 okay. for the equipment or the technology. And then the room build outs vary depending upon how far you want to go with the decor, your furniture, whatever the case is. So that's, you know, that's kind of a, a big moving target. You could do this for a little less sure. 50, um, I would say the average room like this is probably somewhere around 80, give or take, um, you know, depending upon what you choose. But the long story short is, you know, um, Jay, you don't know this, but we're building another room. Oh, wow. Great. Right. Wow. And the other room's going to break the entry level point for another surround theater room in a more, let's say, uh, even more affordable to get us into that. 60s to $80,000 equipment range. And, you know, we can always scale it smaller. So the theme, essentially, that you see here, clean, no clutter anywhere, you can pretty much control how much you spend depending on the options, depending on the speakers yes. you select, whether you want to go with an expensive processor or maybe just a receiver. or right. so, But the theme, the overall idea is something that I think you guys need to look at. When you are in the Fort Lauderdale area, South Florida in general, you need to pay these guys a visit if you are serious about home theater. When it comes to the ultra high-end home theater experience, I haven't seen anything that tops what I saw in here today at Front Row Theater. That is all I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have enjoyed something new on my channel that I think many of you were seriously interested in in the past, but I never had the opportunity to do it. And of course, thank you, John. For Thank your you, time, Jim, for coming by and for everything. Uh, showing this to all your uh, viewership and Absolutely. Your, your, you know, your customers and everything else, and we appreciate it. And uh, we love seeing what you do online. We have a great time with you. So thank you so much for doing this for us. Thank you, guys. That's all I have for today. Continue to join me with my madness. Subscribe and hit that like button. Peace. For some two explosions near the forum.